So I've known about the WatchPad device for a long time. I did some of the groundwork ourselves in our own lab and uh, was aware of the fact that it had been developed to uh, provide a home testing platform for sleep apnea. Physiology is the core of medicine anyway. Right? We have somehow forgotten that this, uh, all our guidelines in sleep has been the, derived from physiologic signals. Now, the watchpad is using these physiologic signals in a very clever way so that you can create a plausibility check on your sleep stage. The watchpad is an attractive device for home testing, primarily because it's easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to train patients on how to deploy it, and not cumbersome at all. And so it makes the home testing a lot easier. In this study, we aim to evaluate the clinical value of the watchpad in diagnosing patients with sleep apnea. We wanted to see what, how well the watchpad does in all comers into a sleep lab, unselected by any inclusion or exclusion criteria that usually apply when you do a research study. This project was an opportunity to dig below the surface and open up the black box, understand how automated watchpad scoring and reporting is done, and by the same token, build confidence in the results and allow ourselves as a team of sleep specialists to get into a few of the details and verify or edit the results of the automated scoring. The outcome of the study is to compare the AHI obtained by the watchpad in an automated fashion, then developing uh, rules to validate sleep staging and the AHI, and then comparing this in the end to the gold standard, which is the PSG in the lab. In real time, you can look at sleep staging in 30 or 60 minute periods of time and very quickly verify the results of non-REM and REM and edit them to a limited degree. It's really not necessary to do much more than that. That's one of the findings of our study. As you know, the watchpad is able to discriminate between wake, non-REM and REM sleep using the almost the core data of autonomic functions, which are heart rate, which are the oxygen saturation and the pulse amplitude. One of the most important features as well is uh, that the watchpad get the confounders of sleep disordered breathing, namely the body position. As you know, some patients have only sleep disordered breathing in supine versus uh, the side position. So this is uh, very reliably measured as well. Watchpad itself provides a really good, reliable representation of sleep architecture and a well-validated estimation of sleep apnea disease status. Once you know that Watchpad is staging sleep well, then of course everything downstream is much easier on viewing and editing, because then you have already established the trust. From the perspective of looking at the sleep disorder breathing events, we see the representation of these events with score tags that are provided by the automated software, but by the same token, we've developed an approach that allows the end user, the sleep specialist, to look at those results, to see them on the screen, and to quickly add or delete events that seem appropriate. I anticipated it might take 20 minutes to go over each study, which is already good compared to other HSTs, but we have been surprised how easy we can teach and then how fast one can process the scoring rules. Now, if you ask the question, is there a need for expert training, right? I would say yes. So you need to learn your signals, which is easy for any doctor, um, because that's part of their training. They just need to remind themselves back on what they have learned in the past. 
then you need to apply these in sim with simple rules that, again, it would not take more than 20-30 minutes probably to teach a doctor to do that. And then you s verify the sleep staging. Once you know your physiology, it takes three to five minutes, sometimes only 10 seconds to look over the, the signals that are presented and say, yes, it's all okay, there's nothing to correct. At a high level, the approach that we're taking really leverages the fact that most of the work is done in scoring sleep studies by automated watch pad scoring. But we've developed an approach that allows us to build confidence that we've either been able to verify or edit and revise the reports and relatively minimal editing is really needed um, and I, I dare say it might not even be needed but it certainly makes us feel good that we've been able to verify most of the sleep architecture on each and every study.